I haven't used a Canon camera in so long. Wow, what is up, YouTube? It's been a minute since I've made a vlog. I've definitely been busy. Look at my crystals. This is a Labradorite crystal. <laughs> <coughs> I've been getting over a sickness. I'm trying to get this lens to focus. It's so loud. So I watch myself a lot. I like to watch my own videos and reflect and meditate on me in the past. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me and that's all that matters. So yesterday I had a very intense meditation experience and to commensurate that post, I reposted that video coming out of my spiritual closet just to share um, with the new subscribers that I have that video because I don't think people go that far back into my YouTube channel and watch my videos. So I wanted to repost it and see who it would reach. And it reached a few people and it felt good. And whenever I watch that video, it reminds me more of who I want to be. If I'm in a state of consciousness that's different from the one before, when I watch these videos, when I watch me from the past, in my current state of consciousness, I I'm able to tap into that frequency again of how I acted in that state when I filmed that video. To commensurate sharing my spirituality and sharing the discoveries that I've had within my own spiritual experiences, I want to share a meditation experience that I had. Yesterday I went into a very deep meditation and I was taken into this world. I have spirit guides and I'm in communication with non-physical entities that guide me upon my path in life. Oh yeah, all this stuff probably sounds crazy. I have to give a disclaimer before I move any further. I'm a scientist, I'm an explorer of consciousness. And so the things that I have to share are only my perspective. It's not anything that, I'm not trying to indoctrinate people into my way of thinking or my way of perceiving my immediate reality. I'm just here to share my perspective and share the things that I experience within my own consciousness and how I've learned and how I've utilized this knowledge from different dimensional planes to better myself in my life moving forward. This meditation started at around, I'd say 11, 11 o'clock. And I triggered a 12th dimensional state of consciousness, wherein everything that I was seeing, everything that I was experiencing, I felt extremely connected to, <coughs> damn it. I felt extremely connected to everything around me, from nature to inanimate objects, to animated objects, to all these things, I felt extremely connected. And also I got in touch and was introduced to a new guide. Guides are non-physical entities. They're versions and aspects of my own consciousness and my own oversoul that are separate in part of me, but are also in a bigger perspective consciousness um, understanding of the term guide, these guides are a part of my oversoul. They are a part of my consciousness. I met a guide who is a reflection of me, but also separate and part of me. It's like my soul has been split up. And when I meet a guide, I'm gaining an aspect of my consciousness back. I do have to give these disclaimers that if you don't have an open mind, then don't watch this video. Or if you'd like to hear a story, then go ahead and listen to this video. How I say it and how I see it is why not believe in magic if it makes life more interesting? And these things that I experience definitely make my life a little bit more interesting. I recorded myself in this meditation because I wanted to document the state of consciousness that I was in. It's impossible to capture these experiences accurately on a camera, on just a camera alone. I need to like learn how to use After Effects and simulate these, um, these like, these visualizations and and just I don't. I can't, I, I just can't. So this guy that I met, this non-physical entity that I met, but I see with my physical eyes, his name is Otem. And it's this, this thing, this, this guy. Let's see if I can, right there. That guy, that's Otem. And that symbol was something really important. I don't know. One of the abilities, one of the abilities that I have is called automatic writing. At least that's, term that I picked up that resonated with whatever this, I can channel things. And when I reach deep meditative states, I'm open to receiving information from different dimensional planes. When this happens, I get the sudden urge to get the journal, get a pencil and just start writing. So this is Otem. He was telling me a bunch of things. Guide, one of my guides. Z, I've met you before. Who are you? I've met you before. What do you want to tell me? And this tree looking thing is something that I also um, saw, this tree with an eye on it. But I think he was showing me images of this other world. I would see faces. My creativity was operating on a very high level. In my floor, in my carpet, in my room, I would see faces. I see it, it's right there, but no one else sees it, but I see it. Um, let's see.
This is one of the faces that I saw in my carpet. If it'll freaking focus that. And then I'd zoom in and I'd see these little strands, these trees, and I'd see the energy flowing through it. I don't know where it was coming from, but then when it would zoom out and then I would see it as part of like a hair or some kind of, I don't know, it was some kind of creature. So what I do when I reach these deep meditative states is I set the affirmation, I tell myself, remember, remember. Whenever, as soon as I have an epiphany about something, I tell myself to remember. Zeg, zeg, remember to, to say what I'm doing, very internal. Even if I don't understand remember at that time when I'm in deep meditative state, I just have used remember as an affirmation to keep my mind level-headed and to kind of grasp that experience and that epiphany and put it into my subconscious mind so that I always remember it. I'm gonna not be able to call upon the memory or that experience vividly, but I know that it resides within my soul being, within my within my consciousness somewhere to, to utilize for future exploration in consciousness. Do, do I sound, yeah, I sound crazy. More. Okay, so my astral body. Uh, this stuff will sound really crazy to people who um, don't aren't familiar with this stuff. Um, over time, I'll explain. I just want to share this experience uh, as it's fresh. Um, it just happened yesterday. But if anyone has if anyone has any questions about connecting to themselves, connecting to guides, connecting to different worlds, seeing things, don't be afraid to ask in the comments, and I'll I'll answer. I guess this is just like kind of a a foundation for me to just to just purge an experience out there, and with my full awareness and consciousness and how I articulate my, my stuff. I do this all the time in real life, but I haven't done it on YouTube yet. So I need to do it on YouTube. So that's what I'm doing. All this bird creature, it looks like an eyelash. Like this is top view of the, of the bird. And this is me. So first it started off as an eye. So this is part of the automatic writing. This, I drew the bird side view and it looks like an eyelash or a eyebrow or whatever. But, and I drew an eye, but then I realized that it, the, the picture started to form more as I started channeling. That's my astral body reaching out into this different dimension and seeing this bird flying and being exposed to a new realm, a new dimension. Uh, yeah, this stuff sounds crazy, I, I know, but j j just bear with me. Just just take it, take it as a story. Take it as like, oh, Paris has an overactive imagination, that's cool. But imagination is more real than we think. We cannot imagine anything that doesn't already exist on another plane of reality, on another dimensional plane of reality. So these things that I'm seeing, even though they're in my imagination, they are not just my imagination. I am really truly tapping into different levels, different states of being, and different dimensional planes of reality. All artists have the ability to do this. All artists are channelers. Um, what else do I have? Uh, very high level of awareness, extremely present in my moment of walking around and being. Okay, and I started to write. I started to, okay. Felt the connecting parts of the whole. Saw the energy working as words that are only symbols. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Stopped being able to record with video cameras. Start, started to write to document experiences. I think the camera died when I was experiencing the state of consciousness. And so like I, I wanted to write everything. Hand still shaking, writing looks terrible, fix, control, control, make handwriting look cleaner despite shaking hand. So I was starting to lose track of all of my processes. Like I, I, could, I started to forget English and I could only speak the, what this is called. I could only speak um, a language that is referred to in the spiritual community as light language, which is a language that comes from different dimensional planes of information. Still lose track of speech, lost track of speech pattern, speaking normally. So I say words that just immediately come to mind to kind of help document and and capture this process. <clears throat> I have combined my consciousnesses from other realities, other parallels that I exist in. Through meditation, I've been able to make contact with these other versions of myself in these different parallel realities, and I've been able to access a different language that I have been able to speak, and this is called light language. So, masao kile tua, bishi salo tua ma ike. Still trying to find grasp, still trying to grasp normal human speech. Remember, saklu tua maokolo tua vela tua marso kila ite au au ke. This is, it's a lot easier to speak in light language than it is to speak in English. Mi fawara. Mi This sound, this feels soul and my soul more. Mia toa ki. So that's something that I feel like I pull out of my ass, but 
<laughs> looking more into it and just being open minded, being open minded and skeptical about the things that I experience. I have used this light language in the past to heal people. I've used this light language to work with non physical entities and clear spaces and clear houses and stuff like that. Um, I do them in readings. I, I read people. Yeah, I'm, I'm weird. Um, but I, do, I want to bring this weirdness into, I want to explain it more from a left brain perspective. Like this stuff may seem crazy and metaphysical and new age, but the way that I think and the way that I process things, I want to merge spirit and science. Have you checked out Spirit Science? It's a YouTube channel, check it out. They have a lot of good information. For anyone who's already fascinated with all these concepts, I'm going deep and in depth with these experiences and how I articulate and understand them. Okay, whatever. Um, still, I, I, I know, it, I, I'm, I'm, every, I'm all over the place. I know I'm all over the place. I, I'm just not really sure how to go about sharing these experiences without making myself look crazy. But I think in judging myself and saying I'm crazy will make other people think I'm not crazy because I'm saying I'm calling myself crazy so I must be sane if, okay. And I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not because these experiences are true to me. Uh, again, why not believe in magic if it makes life more interesting, okay. Um, let's see, Preston's keeping my mind attached to physical reality. So I was losing all touch with three-dimensional reality. My mind would just go to different topics and different subjects. I, I said, you can tell a lot about a person from their handwriting, the psychology behind how someone writes. So this is these are things that I think about in my handwriting shifts as I keep going throughout this experience. Like the, the style of writing just keeps changing throughout this meditation. And this is me tapping into different states of consciousness and into different aspects of my personality. And when I write, I am writing from that aspect of my personality specifically, um, that's what I was kind of uh, aware of. Okay, tapping into different personas, to, similar to Mr. Robot. Have you seen Mr. Robot? It's about a schizophrenic, yeah. <laughs> see with different eyes, see with other world. Okay, this is one, okay, I'm talking to a non-physical entity now. Um, see with, and this is coming from the entity uh, he was talking to me, his name was Otem. See with different eyes, see with otherworldly eyes. It's all here in front of us. Study this insanity, articulate it, structure the insanity so people understand. When people understand, it's only sanity. So that was something that was given by this person or, or creature, this being. Art is the key. So the way that I tap into, the way I tune in, like you see how I draw, right? You see, I dance, I have a lot of different passions. The way I've connected spiritually to myself and to different worlds is through my art. I believe in my perspective that art is the key to accessing different levels of who we are. Art is the key to our subconscious mind because when we create something, we create from our subconscious mind. And when we watch it, when we meditate on our own creation, then we're able to see and pick apart aspects of our consciousness that was channeled into that specific creation. More source material to look at because it comes from our source and it's channeled into symbols when we create something. If we can decode ourselves, that's something that I wrote too, um, that, I, that I received from this being named Otem. We are encrypted. We are encrypted so we must decode ourselves to find truth. We, I, all hold the answer. Keep searching deeper within me. So we are encrypted. All universal knowledge, access to the Akasha, it's encrypted within our subconscious processes. That's something that I, I received from, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy, okay. I'm, I'm not crazy. I, I, I keep saying I'm crazy, but I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. Don't tell me I'm not crazy. I know I'm crazy. Okay, I'm have voices in my head. In spirituality, the most important person that you should worry about satisfying skeptically is yourself. Why did I say that? Um, there's a reason why I said that. Okay, so when I'm talking about this stuff, this video is for myself and people who will watch it will be like, what the hell Paris? But that's okay because as long as I'm able to reflect and look back at myself when I, when I talk about these experiences, I'll be able to learn how to better articulate myself when I speak to people, when I do future videos. This is something that I've never talked about on a public platform such as YouTube. I've done it a lot on my Instagram stories and my Snapchats, but not YouTube. Anyway, um, my pupils were extremely dilated. Eyes, pupils dilated. Still, lose track of speech. Lost track of speech pattern, speaking normally. Okay, I started writing and my mind started to go all over the place. I started to draw everything everywhere and I was trying to illustrate my internal reality. I was writing trust and then I, the word trust just turned into this line turn into a frequency, turn into um, 
a vibration and I the only way I could like do it is just <laughs> Train of thought goes everywhere every stroke reveals something about the consciousness system about the sub about the conscious universe Who is he to me? Who are you? I've been drawing this is how he speaks to me Drawing remember remember this 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 remember okay z z you just want to be called z i can just call you z correct yes okay this is how i communicate through my drawing so when I draw, when I write, and I'm operating on this very high level of presence, very high level of state of being in the moment right now, then when every stroke is conscious, th these strokes are clues. I know that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. I don't believe it's crazy. Whatever. Okay, access to the Akasha is everywhere. Knowledge is everywhere, coded in the virtual reality construct experience. We have encrypted our own knowledge from the cosmos within our bodies. I felt to... The to draw to write to draw me drawing writing this. Okay. We have encrypted our knowledge of the cosmos within our subconscious processes. Pain within my side. Okay, I started talking to what I perceived as something uh, a very intelligent uh, being on the surface. If someone was watching me, they probably think I'm crazy. But internally, as I'm processing everything, I'm I'm very internal processor. So people might see me sitting like this, but really I'm like talking to a bunch of spirits and ghosts or something. I was being told that my body is moving into a crystalline structure. Truth is closer. I started getting a message. You, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, Paris, you're getting closer. Um, I'm getting closer. And then all of a sudden, click, I started have a conversation with this separate entity that seemed to be very intelligent. And okay, aliens, uh, do you believe in aliens? No? Okay, do you believe in aliens? Yes? Okay, whoever said yes or no, whatever, I'm gonna talk about this experience anyway. So. I got the feeling that I was speaking with an extraterrestrial species. They were asking me, do you like being human? And he was, uh, and I was like, my response was, it's an experience. And that's how I process things. It's an experience. I operate on a very um, different level of consciousness than most people. Uh, I, I've broken down my belief systems and I've deprogrammed myself to recognize everything as an experience and that I want to experience limitation. I chose to be here as a human being and I, very, and I know that very deeply within my soul, within my being. Do you want to leave this experience? And I was like, no, I'm afraid. And then they asked me, what are you afraid of? The unknown, but I want to explore. And then what do you wish to know? Uh, I want to remember alchemy. I want to remember how matter works, telekinesis. I want to understand. So I want to understand the makeup of this reality. I want to gain access to this knowledge and wisdom from the Akasha. The Akasha is like a universal library of all information of everything that has ever happened, um, that ever will happen, ever is happening. Uh, it's all stored within this place called the Akashic Records. And People, uh, for visualization purposes, I can say that it's like a library and you can go there and everything that exists all knowledge that exists is in this Akasha, and we all have access to the Akashic records. I can already bend time and space. Yes, so quantum jumping, I've been able to, through meditation, experience uh, a state of being wherein seconds feel like hours, or minutes feel like days. Just of everything that's going on, I get lost in this. How much time has passed? How much time? Different, different frequency. I can change, I can shift. How much time has passed? Then I go internal. But I'm trying to capture, I'm trying to keep hold, keep... Con when I reach that meditative state of being, I'm able to focus more creatively on the things that I'm trying to make. And it feels like I've spent hours and hours and hours, but really, uh, I've only spent a few minutes. Um, all of this happened within like 10 minutes. All these epiphanies and all these different um, discoveries and knowledge that was being given to me happened within a few minutes, but it felt like hours at the time of this channeling. In my consciousness, I understand that time does not exist. I understand very deeply within my soul that time is just, that time doesn't exist. Einstein, theory of relativity, time is all relative, but there's no such thing as past or future. Everything exists in one eternal moment now. So there's no such thing as like past lives or whatever. That's why I say parallel lives parallel realities and stuff okay uh continuing on i'm touching on very vaguely on a lot of different concepts that i understand within my consciousness i don't have time to explain every single one i could probably make hundreds of videos on everything i'm talking about but i just have to keep 
saying, okay, you can leave whenever you choose. That's what I was told. You can leave whenever you choose. Um, I was told you are not from here. I'm, I'm a star seed, so I, my consciousness has incarnated and existed on different planes of reality and also different star systems, such as Sirius, Arcturus, um, and a, a, a bunch of, yeah. Just bear with me, just keep listening to the my nonsense and the story, if you're interested and fascinated in it. Who are you? I asked. We are you. I'm like, what does that mean? I, I know what it means, but um, I understand. Like I, I did understand. I understand what this means, and to the and right now I do understand what this means. Uh, keep using your skills to connect, explore. Remember, we are always with you. So keep using your skills to connect and explore. So keep using my passions. Keep using my expressions as a way for me to connect spiritually to myself and to the universe. And yeah, that's something that I like to share with people when I go more in depth and talk with people because I'm talking on a video. It's going to be very not structured in the way that I talk right now. I'm just kind of going to be going off on a bunch of different tangents. I want to just put this out there and if anyone has questions, then that will give me a basis and more of a structure to create videos based on what people are looking for. Um, I want to share this knowledge, but I don't know where to start. So I'm just... <laughs> um, centaur. Oh, I was a centaur. Uh, I was a horse, like I was breathing, and then all of a sudden I started to hear these extremely visceral sounds of a horse breathing, like, and then I got these visions of a horse with a with a, a man upper body, and this was me. So I used to be a centaur in another dimensional reality of plane. Yeah, okay. Um, a portal opened. Yes. Uh, I was looking for technology, flight, unlocking my brain, remembering my abilities. I started writing, no need for food, no need for gravity, no need for dot dot dot, no need. No, so I know, just when there's no need, you're just in a state of knowing. And that's something that I do understand very deeply within my soul and why I've been able to manifest certain things. Um, right now I'm developing an app. I'm also in the process of creating a production company called Artists of Life Productions and just constantly, consistently in a collaborative, creative mode with many artists of life. Okay, continuing on. And now, how do I explain and articulate this state of being? I'm an educator. I love to educate people about my discoveries in consciousness. But in order for me to do this, I need something to go off of. Otherwise, when I make this video at first, like there's so many topics that I wanna talk about but and explain, and like this state of being, it's hard to describe. I, I've watched like a lot of different spiritual teachers and they explain it in their own ways and I want to try my hand at articulating the state of consciousness that I found from my own perspective. Okay, continuing on. Electricity, heart sound attacking. Oh yeah, so I started feeling and hearing electricity coursing throughout my body. I started seeing these like electrodes like of electricity, just like this. And then I just started seeing those things. Um, and I started searching throughout the consciousness data stream and people block walls of information, perhaps I'm blocking myself from accessing certain information. With my own subconscious belief systems, my own blockages that are um, limiting my connectivity to other people. Yes, uh, there's another epiphany that I had through this meditation and these epiphanies were coming very, very, ah, okay. Unlocking, unlocking is painful. Unlocking can be painful. People who are on their spiritual awakening journey, every moment is a spiritual awakening in my uh, perception, I say that every moment is a spiritual awakening because I choose. Every day I make the conscious choice to change my life. I make the conscious choice to change my belief systems and to challenge myself whenever something comes my way that doesn't really agree with my immediate belief system. And that is very painful. Spiritual awakenings hurt. So if you're hurting a lot, if you're going through a lot of pain, if you're going through a lot of growth experiences, it's not a bad thing. You're, you're getting more in touch with your heart space. You're having these experiences so you're able to understand different uh, perspectives of life, different perspectives of different circumstances, so that you can be more in, in more of a loving heart space, forgiving of other people and, and such. Okay, continuing on. Uh, uh, how can this forward human progress? So why did what? Why is this knowledge useful? Why is this knowledge practical in our everyday lives? I know why. That maybe that'll be a topic later on in future videos. Uh, it forwards your own progress. So I oh what I was processing was that was an ego thing. How can this benefit human progress? It's like, I don't care about human progress. I care about my own progress. But if I care about myself, in loving yourself, you love other. And in loving other, you love yourself. When you focus on yourself and you focus on your own self-development, you put yourself in a better heart space and a better um, consciousness space 
to um, share with others your own discoveries within your own person because I am human. And the more I focus on myself, the more I create my reality to how I want it to be, then I will have the experience to speak from, to share with other people. But if I constantly worry about like sharing this knowledge with other people, then I will never have time to um, explore my own experiences and really break them down and yeah. This is spirituality, it's not a religion, it's not, this is just stuff that I've, in, I've intuitively tapped into and started to access and I've been questioning and questioning and questioning. I started off really skeptical, but then over time I would get confirmation from multiple people. Like if I would read them, I would predict things to happen and they would happen. And basically I would shift my consciousness to a parallel version of that reality, a potential reality based on the energy that's current in the moment. And if it's relevant to that person and they need that information in that present time, I will usually be told by their guide or some kind of non-physical entity or some form of higher consciousness coming from that person our higher higher minds are speaking to each other that say hey tell him this and i'm like okay i'll tell him this uh your girlfriend or uh the next person you're going to meet her name's going to be bethy and then three months later they end up meeting this person they completely forgot about what i told them and then that person's name is bethy and then they're all together and happy and stuff so lots of confirmation i've done within my spiritual practice and <clears throat> skepticism um, but open-minded skepticism, yeah. Nurturing both the left and right brain hemispheres, yes. This, yeah, C continuing on. How can I channel this style of filmmaking to experience the 12th dimension? So what I'm trying to do as a filmmaker is trying to um, create this perception, this state of being, this state of consciousness, trying to emulate it into a style of filmmaking. I don't know how to do that, but at the same time, I do. I have an idea, and I want to make projects that help people experience and access this state of consciousness just by watching it. Um, yeah, utilizing knowledge of the universe. Okay, anyway. Yeah, this is when I started writing in different, different styles. And this, these, are, these were personas that were being channeled from my subconscious belief systems, from handwriting, and it, I was being told to decode myself. Like, I, was, I wasn't talking to myself. Like, Otem, 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 this guy, this bird guy, he, he was telling me and guiding me through all these different epiphanies and, and just this plethora of knowledge. Wear clothes. Clothes help you reach a frequency based on your definition belief system those clothes represent. Okay, so clothes. Clothes make the man, they say, right? These clothes help me access the state of consciousness to where I'm speaking clearly. Blue is a color that has a frequency. Based on my belief system and definition of the color blue, it helps me be more comfortable to communicate uh, what I'm trying to say. I took a shower. I started listening to my coming out of my spiritual closet video. Now when I do that, I'm listening to myself from the past. And I recognize that the person in the past is no longer the person I am now. In every moment, we are a, we are literally a different person. Our cells die and regenerate. Our skin is new. Our, our cells are new. Our organs are new all the time. We are a completely different person operating on a different state of consciousness every single second. <clears throat> um, um, yeah, so I was listening to myself from the past. Now, this is such a powerful meditation that I've found. And also, life is a meditation. I've started to realize that life is a meditation. In every moment, I am meditating. In every moment, I live very much in the present to gain information from everything that I'm looking at, everything that I'm doing. Even the way I'm speaking right now, I'm breaking it down subconsciously, somewhere separate consciousness in my head. And yeah, and this is very intentional. The way I'm talking is very intentional. I'm very like all over the place because it's entertaining. And also, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Pl spurging, pur purging, yeah, and I'll make videos responding to people who, who in, okay. But looking at yourself is a very powerful meditation. My vlogs are my meditation. In my personal opinion, in my personal perspective, and my own experience, looking at myself, myself is the strongest source of spiritual wisdom and insight that I will ever find. And I that, that doesn't mean I'm closed off to listening to other people's perspectives. I always look outwardly and inwardly for information. There's a balance between the two. And I found that balance um, within myself, I, I feel. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Continuing on. Because my I listen to my videos, I let them play in the background. Because I'm a filmmaker, I, I create them with a very defined intention from my heart space. With, with the music that I choose, the cuts that I make, and the the B-roll that I choose to put over the video to help tell the story um, from that coming out of my spiritual closet video. Me playing the video in the background is setting the frequency and intention in my room. So these videos are my affirmations. When I look back at them, they're my affirmations from that past uh, state that I was in. And so when I listen to it, it fill, and when I play it out loud, it fills my room with that frequency. It fills my room with that energy from, 
how I was speaking back then. And it allows me to tap into that frequency again to re-motivate myself by listening to myself. It's like necessary. I want people to experience like the deep side to where people can like actually gain a sense of who they are through it. But then all, and not just through parkour too, because I'm, I'm an artist in general. Like I'm an artist of life. And I've gained a strong sense of who I am because of all these artistic mediums that I found to express myself in. So, and every day I make the conscious choice to change my life. And I don't know, that's what I do. And that's one of the most powerful things that I've been able to do for myself in my spiritual in my spiritual journey. And spirituality is not a religion. Spirituality is the accumulation of all your belief systems and how you choose to live your life and your, your perspective on your life. This is spirituality. It's studying your own spirit. Not the dogmas or the indoctrinations of other people, but like it's the process. Spirituality is the conscious choice to start learning from everything and not being closed off into a certain um, separated belief system or dogma, but taking in all knowledge from everywhere and then making your own choices as to what you believe in. Yeah, levels upon levels of... So, okay, when I was listening to myself speak, um, the coming out of my spiritual closet video, this is levels upon levels of self-reflection, levels upon levels of different states of consciousness I was in in different time frames. And this is really deep stuff okay um writing this now okay i looked at my foot i looked at see it sort of and i saw my veins i saw the veins very um vividly like it was an x-ray and also um i saw the energy moving throughout my veins i zoom in and i see the cells moving around and then i get a uh, Another message from Otem, you can control my cells. I can control my cells, and I can control the regenerative process. I can control healing sickness. I can heal people with this energy. And this is something that I've done a lot in the past with much confirmation. I've, I've healed people's physical injuries and stuff of that nature, or just energetically like rebalancing their energy body or things like that. I don't know how I do it. It's just something that I intuitively tapped into in working with my guides and being skeptical and questioning everything, but then really coming into a space of acceptance that Believing is seeing. See, seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. When you start to open your mind to a wider consciousness system, you start to realize that believing is seeing. And seeing alone is not believing. We experience whatever reality we project from our internal. Our internal reality is a reflection of our external reality, right? So whatever we feel that we are experiencing, whatever we feel our reality is, if I feel depressed and angry, then I will experience a depressing and angry reality around me. I will choose to be operating on that frequency and I will attract things of that frequency into my experience. But if I feel happy, if I feel blessed, if I feel like life is amazing, life is beautiful, and I'm, I'm abundant in people that are of my frequency, people that I can share spirituality with and share ideas with, then so it will be. I will, I will put that frequency out there and I will attract those people, those individuals that resonate off of the energy that I give off. And this is also science. Science and spirituality are starting to merge. Spirituality is starting to be scientifically proven. And I'll, more, more videos to come. This is some summary of future content. Continuing. When I was in this meditative state, all of my guides were surrounding me and protecting my room. Okay. Whatever floats my boat, right? Um, you are quite the interesting human being. Oh, that's what someone said to me. Me, uh, outside person say me. You are quite the interesting human being. I'm like, okay. Uh, I received a name walking around half naked in my room. Oh, this is when I met Otem. So that's when I realized that the person that, I, the, the entity that I've been communicating with uh, he revealed himself finally, and his name was Otem. I, I recognized that all this information was coming from a separate form of consciousness from my own. Separate, not separate, whatever. Uh, deep, Very deep un understanding meaning. Uh, when I got the name Otem, I looked it up in uh, on Google. I'm like, what? What's Otem? What does that mean? I looked up this thing. Although you have good appreciation of material values, business ability, and skill in ma organizing and managing others, your success your success is restricted by a lack of self-confidence, which is very reflective of what I've been going through right now. I'm trying to create businesses, I'm trying to develop an app, and I'm trying to create all these projects, and I don't, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm doing it because it's fun and it's interesting. Yeah, anyway. So Z, 
Oh, the owl from earlier. Oh, wait, that, the owl from earlier that I showed you guys. This guy. His name wasn't Otem. His name is Z. There were two separate entities, Otem and Z, that I was communicating with during this meditation. That's Z. And Otem. Otem was a separate entity from Z, yes. This is a style that I talk about, um, just making it known to myself. The people who watch my vlogs, I get you guys to think that I'm talking to you guys, but really I'm talking to myself. Paris, you're crazy. You're not crazy. You're beautiful. Okay. Yes. Paris, you watching this from the future, remember the state of consciousness that you're in. Remember this. And uh, the other people who are watching this, I hope you're having a fun time. Vince. So Vince is a guy that I had a difficult experience with. A lot of people started telling me that I was possessed. And when I started to awaken to uh, different dimensional planes and uh, non-physical entities and accept these things to exist, Vince was the first guy that I met. And people were scared of him because he has no face and he looks like a magician and he's very ominous. He wears a cape. Uh, I asked him to take the form of something that is friendly to my consciousness so that I don't freak the hell out. I've been very questionable in turn, very questionable as to if I should keep interacting with this entity, but um, he really is my guide and everyone is scared of him. But when, through this meditation, I was talking with Vince and he's an ascended master. And that's more deep stuff later on that that's, might sound crazy to people, but. Yeah. So Vince is an Ascendant Master and he helped me hone my abilities such as astral projection, uh, reading people, setting barriers, creating, uh, utilizing energy, and things of that nature. When I got that information that Vince was, in, that, that Vince was an Ascended Master, um, I was skeptical and untrusting of that information that I was given. I'm told, I've been constantly told that Vince is neither good or bad. There's no such thing as good or bad. Vince is neutral. Um, yeah, anyway, continuing on. I started drumming. I started playing a drum, this thing. This helped me meditate a lot. Playing, song, doing things that you love to do are very strong forms of meditation. This is a form of meditation that I don't think is really talked about that much. And whenever we do something that we love to do, is that not meditation? Because we're living in the moment of what we are creating and we're living in the moment of what we are doing and we're following our intuition very, very presently in the moment and allowing our intuition to guide what we create. When we do this, we allow both our technicality and our left brain and our right brain to be working in unison to create something. Whenever you are doing something that you love, once again, you are, that is a form and version of meditation. That is a form and version of meditation. When I'm flipping off stuff, when I'm dancing, when I'm filming something, when I'm playing this weird space drum thing, I am meditating. I said something earlier about use your art. Your art is the key to the realm. And this is what I mean by that. When we allow ourselves to express ourselves and meditate on our creation process and be conscious of it, not just focused on creating, but also even uh, paying attention to the subconscious processes that are going on as we create things. That's a very deep and very powerful way to connect to more of who you are. When you find something you love to do, when you find something that you're passionate about, when you find something that's fun to you, utilize that as a meditation. Have the intention that this is a meditation. This is something that will teach me more about who I am and not just something that's cool, but when we, when we apply that stronger intention, this is a meditation for me to learn something about who I am. 
And we will find these answers through our passions and through our art forms. And in my opinion, this perspective that I developed and the way I have connected so deeply to my spirituality, to my um, breakdown of belief system and acceptance of a wider consciousness reality, I think it's a fun way to do it. Anyway, this is stuff, this is like business stuff that I got from some of my guides um, from outside information. Your passion is your pitch. Uh, your scripts are your thoughts in the moment, Paris. So this is just stuff to help me as, as a filmmaker um, and how I can channel all this knowledge into educating people. I don't know if I'm focused. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry if I'm not focused. I'm not going to record this again. I'm just going to post it and, in its rawness. Okay. This is one of the things that I've grown up with that's always been hard for me to do. It was to balance the, the awareness and my social life. Because I was so aware of things and so empathically in tune with myself and in tune with other people's emotions, I, I, there was a time where I didn't know how to balance and uh, dictate whether or not that emotion is coming from somebody else or if, I'm, or if it's coming from me. If that belief system or fear is coming from somebody else or if it's coming from me. And so because of this, because I would spend so much time just kind of analyzing and observing everything, I grew up as an observer and I was never really social with people. Um, now I'm starting to learn and I want to balance this wisdom and my social life. I want to implement this wisdom in my social life and to share this wisdom in my social life. And I guess I'm going to stop it right there. This is probably going to be a long video and I don't even know if anyone's fully watched it. Um, I hope you enjoyed my, uh, my rambling and I hope there were some things that people understood. So if anybody has any questions and wants me to build more specifically on a certain topic, these are things that I've developed within myself, belief, um, perspectives and understandings that I've developed within myself. And I want to share it. I just don't know where to start. And I just like kind of gave a brief summary of random stuff that I've done. Um, there's so much more. There's a plethora of things that I've accessed from the Akasha and have utilized in my daily life and that has benefited me in my daily life, in my manifestations and in the way that I see different circumstances and the way I overcome them. If you have any questions, please comment below and I will get to making videos about spirituality and sharing this wisdom. I love creating vlogs and capturing my experiences and travels. Um, lately, my camera's been broken. This is a Canon 70D, this is my dad's camera. The camera that I own has been broken for a while. My cousin dropped it on the floor and broke the lens. So that's why I haven't been making vlogs that much. I don't have my tiny camera. I miss it because it's tiny. This camera is freaking humongous. But today I just watched that coming out of my spiritual closet video and it's like, I should start doing it now. I should start putting out those, these kinds of videos and sharing this knowledge. It's about time. I've, ex I've gotten in touch with my past lives. I've, I understand more very deeply a sense of who I am, where I came from, why I came here, and what I want to do here. Um, not what I'm meant to do here, but what I want to do here. Because it's all just a fun experience that we chose to go through. And we can make and choose to experience any reality that we wish to. So I'm here to have fun. And I hope you guys are here to have fun too, because that's what I want to help people with. Okay, why not believe in magic if it makes life more interesting? Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys soon and hear all your judgment and skepticism and criticism and questions and insight. I don't know, I'm trying to build a weird community of Paris people or not Paris people, but stalkers that, so, okay. <laughs>